this passage of scripture, it shows us how far Saul had gotten away from God and how desperate he is Ooh, for an answer. Mm -hmm. Let me ask another question on today. And be honest, have you ever been desperate for an answer? Amen. 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 I think we all have been desperate for an answer. Amen. We've been desperate for an answer. Amen. Some of us even prayed to God and God didn't answer us right away. Or we felt like God wasn't moving fast enough. As I said before, people of God, it doesn't matter how fast or how slow moves God. As long as God moves, he's going to be on time. Amen. 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 Hmm. But this shows us Saul had gotten away from God. First of all, he swore by the Lord, by God himself. Then he said, as long who saw, as the Lord lived. He put all this on God. He put his deception on God. He put his disobedience on God. <laughs> Saul used God's name in battle. Saul, he lied on God. <laughs> Secondly, Saul offered protection. When he did not have the ability nor the authority to do so. Amen. Amen. God does not offer protection to demons, to principalities and powers of darkness. Thirdly, he vowed to protect the media. Saul just made a covenant, a contract with the devil by telling the media he would protect her. See, it's a little bit deeper than what we're reading. He came into agreement with the very darkness that God told him not to have any dealings with. Saul made a deal with the devil. Amen. I want to encourage you in this hour not to make any deals with the devil. Can I get a witness? Amen. Huh. He, he, made, he made an agreement. But this also shows us that people would go to extremes. People would go to extremes of even disobeying God to get what they desire. Amen. They would lose faith in God. They would turn from God, but put their trust or their faith in principalities of darkness in order to be satisfied. Amen. Let me make an announcement on today, church. You're going down a wrong path if you're making an agreement with the devil. Amen. The devil is not your friend. The devil is not your homie. The Amen. devil is not your God. John 10 and 10 says, the thief came, ooh, the thief, the, the, the thief came to kill and destroy. But Jesus says, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. You're going down the wrong path if you make that agreement. If you make that agreement with evil. If you make that agreement with those who are doing things contrary to God. With those who claim to speak to the dead. But Saul continues to consult with this medium. Verse 11 says, Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? Saul knew it was, it was wrong, but he continued to do so. Uh, he let his desire overshadow the very things he was not supposed to do. He let his flesh rule him instead of letting the spirit rule him. He, he then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? He went to her. Now she's going to do what Saul is asking. And he said, Bring me up Samuel. See, people of God understand that the devil will give you exactly what you want. Amen. Yeah, yes, you will. But it'll come with a cost. That cost is your soul. No, yes. What do you mean, brother pastor? The Bible says in Mark 8 and 36, what profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Amen. 
Church, your soul ought to be important to you. You ought to protect your soul, amen. You ought to protect your soul. You ought to watch over your soul, praise God. The devil is out to steal your soul. Praise God. And that's one reason why God has provided pastors, because pastors are the watchmen of your soul. See, 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 see. God, he wants to put a watch on your soul, amen, amen. that you may not sin against thee. God loves you so much, he puts a watch on your soul in order to, to keep Satan from stealing your soul. Amen. That's why Jesus, amen. one reason why Jesus died on the cross, amen, amen. to save amen. our soul. Amen. Amen. You can't save your soul. Amen. It took the blood of Jesus Christ dying on the cross, rising, red, rising on the third day morning, and us receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's how your soul is saved. Amen. But the devil is busy. He, he's, he's roaming to and fro like a roaring lion trying to destroy and steal souls. Many people have profited in this world, but they have lost their soul. Understand that in this passage of scripture, Samuel had been dead for two years, but Saul wanted to consult Samuel because God would not answer him. Saul was such in a bad place that even though even when, when Samuel was alive, he stopped advising Saul two years before his death. That's how bad off Saul was. In church with some people, it gets to a certain point where you have to you have to stop trying to advise them because they don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. Just like God turns people over to themselves, sometimes you have to do the same. Everybody can't be fixed because some simply they don't want to be fixed. I remember when we went over to the Middle East. And they were trying to they were trying to Americanize the, the Saudi Arabians and, and and they didn't want us over there, praise God. Why? Because they didn't want to be Americanized. Right. It wasn't nothing right. wrong with them, praise God, but they didn't want to be Americanized. But some people they just don't want to be fixed. And there's nothing that we can do about that. Yeah. But yeah. Saul was beyond repair. Because he was disobedient to God and no longer had a relationship with God. He thought he did, but God was gone. And when you don't have a relationship with God, the devil, he slides right into that place. And it's the same today, church. Some think they have a relationship with God, but in reality, they, they do not. Well, how do you know, Brother Pastor? Because they never mention God, they're living contrary to God, and you never see God moving in their lives. Yes. Yes. St. Paul, understand that if you are a born-again believer who is truly living for God, there will be a manifestation of God in your life. Now, I'd like to say that God has left you or forgotten about you, but God is waiting on us to conform to his ways. Amen. God does not conform to us. God does not do what we want to do. We conform to the ways of God, and we do what God wants us to do. Amen. You want to see various. You want to see God start moving in your life? Do what God wants you to do. Amen. Amen. Uh, I ain't going to get no help. Amen. 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 Like God preached to the lights on today. The evidence will be the evidence will be there because if God is in you, his manifestation, his glory, his blessings are going to flow in for and through you. There are some things, there are some blessings that 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 that, that, that are privy to only God's people. Mm -hmm. See, everybody don't get the benefits. And blessings of God. 
But look at verse 12. Here's where you're going to see the power of God working. Verse 12 says, And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Saul, why have you tricked me? The reason why she cried with a loud voice, church, is because is because she actually saw Samuel. Amen. She actually saw Samuel. She also cried with a loud voice because normally the familiar spirits she she sees are not real. They are satanic. See, she was used to seeing demons and devils, but this time she saw Saul. The reason why God allowed the medium to see Saul was to show her that she was dealing with a power greater than her. Amen. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Lord. But also understand that God has to show or demonstrate his power to others to let them know. And let the devil know they are dealing with a power greater than them. Yes, yes. Come on now. God would demonstrate his power through your life. Amen. God would demonstrate his power through blessings. Amen. God would demonstrate his power through salvation, Amen. through saving you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God would demonstrate his power because yes. when many counted you out, you're still here. Amen. 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 Some folks counted you out, but you're still here. That's the power of God. Yes. You know, thank you. You may have felt like you couldn't make it, but God kept you here. Amen. Yes. All hell may have broken loose in your life, but God kept you here. Yes. He kept you here because yes. there's a plan for your life. It may seem like doom and gloom. It may seem like you can't make it. But by the grace and mercy of God, you're still alive today. Give God a hand clap of praise for his grace and his mercy. Yeah. Yes, we, we, we do struggle, praise God. We do go through, praise God. But through the power of God, amen, he's able to bring us through. Amen. Amen. But also, people of God, hear me clearly on this. Don't go to God asking if you can talk to someone who's passed away. God only did this. There's a couple of times he did this. He did it in this instance to prove who he is and his power. And the second time God did that, well, Jesus did it with the rich young ruler. Uh, uh, he said to Jesus, go tell his family not to come here. He was in hell. He had, First he asked Jesus to dip some water on his tongue. Then he asked Jesus, go tell his family not to come there. And Jesus told him, if your family will listen to Moses, for surely they wasn't going to listen to him. I stopped by this morning to tell us all we need to start listening to God. We need, yeah, there it is. We need to listen to God. If Saul would have listened to God, he wouldn't be in predicament that he's in. And sometimes by listening to God, what God wants us to do is not what we want to do. But I'm going to tell you, my brothers and sisters, God's not going to tell you to do anything wrong. God's not going to tell you to do anything that's going to hurt you. God wants to bless you. God loves you. God wants to lift you up. Amen. Whatever God tells you, it tells us it's for our good. Is there anybody here on today who knows that whatever God says is for our good? God did this to prove who he is and his power. Again, if you need answers, pray to God. Search the scriptures. Talk to a man or woman of God who possess wisdom. And you can talk to your pastor as well, amen. amen. The medium, she figured it out that it was Saul. And if I can say it like this, the deceiver has been deceived. Saul tricked her. 
But in verses 13 and 14, the medium, she tells Saul what she sees. And Samuel puts his face to the ground and he bows himself. Amen. But in verse 13, here's what Samuel speaks. Verse 15 says, And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted? Saul, why have you disturbed me to bring me up? And Saul said, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. God is departed from me, answers me no more, neither by the prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called you, I have called you, Samuel, that you make me know what shall I do. <laughs> Saul is so desperate <laughs> that he disturbs Samuel, who's resting in peace. He's resting in peace. And the reason why Samuel was resting in peace is because he was a man of God who served God to the end. He died in the faith. Contrary to popular belief, church, everybody's not resting in peace. Amen. The commentary says, God did not answer Saul. Y'all look this way. Look at me. God did not answer Saul. God did not answer Saul appeal because Saul had not followed God's previous direction. Amen. When Saul conquered the Amalekites, God told Saul to destroy all the spoils and kill King Agag. But Saul only destroyed what did not look good to him. He took the spoils and kept King Agag as a war trophy. Let me say it like this, church. When God tells you to give something up, you give it up. Amen. When God tells you to do something, you do something. Amen. Sometimes people, they wonder why their prayers are not answered. Mm -hmm. But if you don't feel, fulfill the responsibilities God has already given them, they should not be surprised when he does not give further guidance. Amen. And this is the case with Saul. Okay. He no longer had guidance mm -hmm. from God. Yeah, I get it. Uh, he no longer had guidance from God. So he seeks the wrong source to try to find guidance. Amen. Amen. Verse 16 says, Then said Samuel, Wherefore then thou ask of me? Seeing the Lord is departed from thee and is become thine enemy. There you have it, church. The reason why Saul turned to the medium is because God left him. And he became an enemy of God. Amen. Sin and rebellion causes mankind to be separated from God and to become an enemy of God. And it comes to a point where God says enough is enough. Amen. And he would depart from people who fail to listen and obey, be obedient to him. Amen. There's nothing wrong with serving God and being in the Lord. Amen. Amen. In verse 17, Samuel answers Saul. Verse 17 says, And the Lord had done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord had rent the kingdom out of thy hand, watch this, and given it to thy neighbor, even David. What are you saying, brother pastor? In other words, in other words, Saul, God took away his kingship and he gave it to David. In other words, Saul, at this point, he was only a figurehead. God had left him. In church, it's a bad situation when people continue to serve in positions where it's clear that God has left them. Amen. God has left him. 
And if Samuel would have repented, God would have came back to him. But Samuel refused. I'm sorry. But Saul refused to repent. Verse 18 says, Because thou obeyed not the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath upon Ammon, therefore had the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. There are consequences for sin. There are consequences for disobedience. Amen. Church, God will fire people. Amen. I know this is not the most exciting sermon on the day, but the word is the word. It's the truth, Amen. praise God. We shout another day, amen. amen. Verse 19, more of the Lord will also deliver Israel, I'm almost through, with thee into the hand of the Philistines. The Philistines, they were enemies of Israel, and tomorrow shall thou be in thy sons, be with me. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall also deliver the host of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Look what happened to Saul because of his disobedience. Mm -hmm. He lost his kingship. Mm -hmm. Well, first, God, God departed from him. He lost his kingship. And now, Israel, they're going to be delivered into the hands of their enemies. Mm -hmm. And finally, Saul and his sons, We ought to thank God that we're now in the disposition, dispensation Amen. of grace. Amen. Because in the Old Testament, God was pouring out his wrath on people. But in the New Testament, he's given us grace. Amen. Even when we don't get it right. Amen. We have the grace of God on our lives. Amen. Amen. Saul went to this medium looking for answers. Mm -hmm. And as the old saying goes, be careful what you ask for. Amen. Amen. Because when you ask, when you ask for it, you just might get it. Amen. And it might not be what you want. Amen. Right? Amen. Finally, in verse 20, the Bible says. And Saul fell straightway all along the earth. He fell down on the ground. He was afraid because of what Samuel had told him. There was no strength in him, for he had not eaten no bread all day nor all night. So as I close on today, come to understand that there is danger in choosing the wrong source. Amen. Amen. For the last two weeks, we've been talking about what happens when you choose the wrong source. Amen. And we see in this passage of scripture that Saul, he chose the wrong source. <laughs> in church, Whatever you do, don't choose the wrong source. Amen. 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 Understand, as people of God, we're not to seek the advice of mediums, psychics, necromancers, wizards, witches, familiar spirits, because they are ungodly. And nor are we to make an attempt to speak to the dead. Hmm. And this is a timely sermon series for such a time because there are many people trying to contact the dead, want to speak to loved ones that have went on. There's nothing that they can tell you that God cannot tell you. Amen. Amen. And what people are trying to do that is deception, it's trickery. They're just stealing people's money. Amen. Amen. Understand that Jesus is the way. John 14 and 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. If we need answers or counsel, all you have to do is go to God in prayer. 
Wait for God to ask. Seek a fellow brother or sister in Christ. Search the scriptures, amen. And God will give you the answers that you need. Amen. The danger of choosing the wrong source, part two, and all the people said amen. amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We want to extend an invitation to discipleship. There may be somebody here, there may be somebody listening or watching that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus in Romans 10. That God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, today, 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 today is your opportunity to be saved. If you need a church home, Today is your opportunity to become a part of St. Paul Church. If you on the conference line, you can hit star six to unmute yourself. Say, Pastor, I need a church home. I want to be saved. If you watch it by way, Facebook or YouTube, just type in the comments. I need to be saved. I'm looking for a church home. So if that's you on today, it's your opportunity. You don't want to leave here without a church home. You, want to, you don't want to leave without being saved. Brother Pastor, I'm not ready. I'm going to wait. The Bible says we're not promised tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Luke 12 and 40 says, For be ye ready. No man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. So if you're not saved or you need a church on the opportunity, get today. Will it be one on today? Will it be one on today? Will it be one on today? And all the people said amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise on today.